is that the vine of a master procrastinator? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is that about, dude? Did you know they said that the smart people are actually lazy? Because they'll find every oh, yeah. way. Oh, they'll find any way to do something uh, with less without, work. Yeah. Without, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Hot Couch Potato, the podcast where we talk about video games and the T blood cells. My name is Brent. I'm here with my man, Rick. How you doing, man? So, I don't know if I talked about this last time, but yeah, I was, I was having this nagging cough. And, you know, they said it was like my asthma and whatnot. But still, every time I cough and then I start feeling like I'm going to get a fever, I like start panicking. So mm-hmm. I take a bunch of shit, ton of medicine. And then, you know, I feel better the next day. And I'm like, dude, I think it might have been that flu shot I got way back then. <laughs> Wait, that's been holding you down with the sickness exactly, this Exactly. Because every time I always feel like I'm going to get, like, super sick. I usually do. Mm-hmm. But when I got that shot, yeah, I've always felt like I'm going to get sick. And then, boom, you know, I felt better the next day. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't know if I'm pushing my luck this week. Um and you know, every time I try to go out, like I only go out to just get food and then come back home. And when I do, I get like I start coughing like quite a bit. Uh-huh. So I don't know if it's acting up from like the pollen or whatever, you know, because it's raining. Okay. But you have but allergies. I don't know. Like uh-huh. I know, like um, when I do go out, I start feeling it. But yesterday, like I just went out to go get but better buzz and then go back home and came home i was like coughing a lot and i was like holy fuck this is it you know this is this is it so (laughs) today i woke up and i didn't really cough at all today Uh and uh you know i coughed a little bit like just now but today i was like you know what i'm not gonna go out for a good while i think (laughs) i think i'm gonna hold off you know because you guys are talking about like pizza hut and Mm -hmm. stuff like that i was literally thinking about ordering some pizza again Mm -hmm. i was like you know what rick you want to live today so yeah don't do it and i was like okay i'll just eat some hot dogs (laughs) (laughs) yeah so you're saying fresh air the fresh air has corona in it it just makes you sick every time you breathe it I think what happens is when I get there, and I don't know if it's like a mental thing, but when they when I get the food, I see them ha- always have gloves on. Mm-hmm. So then, like I like use my hand sanitizer every time I like use my card and whatnot. And then I don't know; it's, it's probably a mental thing or whatnot. But um, yeah, okay, I feel you. And then I start coughing a lot, and I was like, you know what? This I don't want to feel like that today. <laughs> <laughs> I did that today as well, though. I. Uh went out to go get some food and when i got back home uh i super washed my hands man like it, this if anything this is usually i just give it a good once over you know yeah but today i really thought about oh shit i touched this money that someone else touched that someone else touched that could add the coronavirus dude so i just super yep. washed my hands before touching anything on my face even you know what i mean i get my face itched i'll use my sleeve to scratch it and stuff like that instead of just using my bare hand yeah, see, that's the thing, too. Like, I try to use my sleeve, but I remember I used my sleeve to open the doors. Uh-huh. And then, so, like, I try to use my hands, but then I'm still scared of my hands. So I'm like, yep, I'm going to just itch and die right here. Like, <laughs> it's not going to go away. Just and then I remember I was panicking. Right uh-huh. <laughs> I was panicking at the ATM. Uh, uh-huh. I was in a drive through ATM, and I had gloves, you know. I was like, all right, I'm going to use my gloves, you know, put in the card, type in my PIN, and then, you know, which all the cash. And mm-hmm. I was thinking, wait, the fuck? Wait, I'm, if I do that uh, and I p- touch the pin with my gloves, that means when I touch the card, you know, I'm getting the virus on top of my card. <laughs> so I was really thinking hard about this. I saw at first I was like, you know what? I'll use my gloves to put the card in, touch uh-huh. the numbers, withdraw the money. When the money comes out, take off my glove. Withdraw my card, withdraw the ca- – dude, it it just changed my way of thinking, you know. I used to just, like, <laughs> touch everything, you know, and then, like, wash my hands. But still, like, now uh-huh. I'm, like, really thinking about my where my hands are. Exactly. Yeah, you really scrutinize all your actions that you make, dude, just to exactly. see if there's a point of contamination anywhere, man. Yeah. Exactly. That's insane, man. This is really just changing the way we are. Do you think after all this blows over, you'll go back to your ways of just like doing whatever and then touching your face? 
Oh, probably not for a good while. Uh-huh. I think what I'm going to be very conscious of everything I touch. I'm always going to have like a hand sanitizer bottle with me. And mm-hmm. I do. I have it hanging on my belt loop. And <laughs> people are like trying to ask where I got it. And I'm like, dude, I just bought this at the store. So, you know, it's not gold or anything. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people are acting as if it's gold. And yeah. when I did run out, you know, I have like a lot of bottles to replace it for for now. I'm going to start panicking and then bringing like an actual bottle of wipes and just wipe everything down, everything I touch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like Clorox wipes, dude. Yeah, I have Holy Clorox shit. wipes. So I'm wiping, you know, my door um, for now. But if it comes to that point where, because I have to exit two fucking doors, no, three doors. My oh, door, yeah, when you leave your place. Ha- hallway, yeah, the hallway door and then the garage door. And then I have to open another garage door. And I'm thinking, man, how many fucking people touch this these doors? <laughs> so... Yeah, I think I might just have gloves. Damn, and did you say homeless people poop behind that one door, dude? Exactly, in my Damn. parking garage. So Damn, that doesn't dude. make anything good. <laughs> <laughs> He's just smearing shit all over the door handles, man. That'd be crazy, exactly. bro. He could like pooped, wiped his butt with his hand, <laughs> and touched the door. And I'm like, damn, that's the biggest troll. You won. <laughs> won. Oh my god, dude. But yeah, no, we're effectively day three into this lockdown shit man yep it already feels like too long and you know i I was crying a little bit about you know having to go to work while everybody else was at home but after being home for two days dude i'm I'm kind of glad (laughs) i get to go to work and be outside for a little bit man dude yeah i think when we start this whole week i was kind of home mostly and Mm -hmm. i started to see like i was like I should be joyed that, you know, I'm not going in to work, but I don't know. I'm starting to feel like, holy crap, I feel completely isolated. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sat, I literally sat down one time for an hour just staring at my computer and I was like, I could be playing games right now or watching something, but mm-hmm. I think I might be bored at that point. So <laughs> it, was, it was weird. And then I yeah. went outside for, to get my food and I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. You yeah, know? yeah. It is really... <sighs> sparse out there though like i noticed especially today driving around there were really i guess it's sunday but there really wasn't a lot of cars like driving around out there either it's kind of crazy yeah yeah so that's good though everybody's doing their part and really just going out for like essential stuff um but yeah and this is supposed to last months dude it's gonna be interesting man it's gonna be an interesting next few months dude i don't know how long i can last i think maybe a month maybe maybe i don't mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. i need i need to see things and, yeah yeah you know but i guess i can do as much as i can watch catch up with all the anime catch up with all the games you know i mm-hmm. guess this is the time right now um but other than that yeah the um, good thing is last long. at least we have like a lot of ways we can communicate with each other still right if you got discord that everybody's jumping on to play Animal Crossing and shit, man. We've been playing a lot of Neo during uh, voice chat on PlayStation, dude. So that's yeah. cool for a little bit, but it, it really isn't the same, man. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think it's because, I don't know, it's like you buy a pot at Apple Pie, and it's like amazing, mm-hmm. and you love it, you know? You can't wait for it to eat it again next time. But then now it's like we're given 20 apple pies. You're not going to want to eat <laughs> eating the same apple pie <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm feeling right now with how, like, we're staying at home and, mm-hmm. you know, my views to to things. So, I don't know. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, ultimately, we'll get through it. It'll just be crazy, man for the immediate future and how things are at the present but i think ultimately it'll blow over it'll just we just got to get through it and we will i hope we find a vaccine because that Mm -hmm. little infographic thing you showed me about how (laughs) it spreads Mm -hmm. spreads mind control and i was thinking (laughs) you know my 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 things in life is like string theory and all that Mm multiverses but i'm like thinking too like maybe we are you know, like a pea in a big soup, mm-hmm, uh, you mm-hmm. know, in somebody else's body, you know, and we're the, the invaders on this, this cell on mm-hmm. planet, aka planet. But 
I don't know. It, it's maybe maybe those coronavirus are actually little tiny alien invaders, of- <laughs> 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 and they're they're invading planets. They're they're blending in, assimilating to the population. <laughs> And mind controlling their little tiny government. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one way they're taking us out is through our own bodies, dude. Through our own white blood cells, man. Just murdering us, dude. Exactly. Crazy, crazy. But unfortunately, well, fortunately enough for this whole lockdown thing, it has been a good time to catch up on all kinds of video games, dude. Yep. Um, I finally found some time to finish uh, Witcher 3. Uh, the main story at least so that was good um i'm pleasantly well no i I love the game man i love the series as a whole i think it's perfect dude that's good like what do you uh what do you think about the 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 whole story the whole ending um i like it Uh, it's you know it's actually something that's been in the background as a like bigger evil over the whole trilogy, I think. Um, for the first two games, it was really, um, you know, Geralt trying to get his memory back because he lost it, and he's trying to get his life back together. And this third one, he finally has his life back together. But then you find out, like, oh, shit. <clears throat> As he was trying to get his life back together, the people that he knew um, were fighting this greater evil, and now it's time for Geralt to join the fight, you know? So I think yep. it all connects incredibly and dude i'm just realizing now how good like the graphics are you know like thinking about it especially after playing a bunch of other games Geralt is super sarcastic you know and he wears his emotions on his sleeve and he's not afraid to tell people like you're a fucking idiot you know so when someone tells him something he doesn't like you could see him like and you could tell in his face his emotion is like the fuck are you talking about you know what i mean yeah he like, doesn't have oh, to say geez. yeah he doesn't have to say a word and you already know what he's feeling right and yep. at the same time when people make their uh when you make your choice of what you want Geralt to say you know sometimes it'll say something but when he actually says the words it's different from what you know you're choosing but just because a look on his face you have a good feeling of what he's going to say regardless of what you pick even if it is different from what the words actually on the screen type out to say. Um, I know it sounds confusing, but I guess it's a the difference of choosing yes or no as a dialogue option. Yeah. But instead of saying just yes, Geralt goes into this whole thing. The whole thing about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't even say the word or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. But you already know what he's doing. Yeah. Just because yeah. of the look on his face. And then other characters too. Like there's pretty some there's pretty emotional moments at the end of the game. And yeah just the people look super sad you know and it looks it doesn't look too video gamey or too fake it looks almost real you know or believable so i dig that i think that i didn't realize it until now you know after playing other games it's like oh man they did a really good job graphics wise with the faces if the faces were any weirder um i wouldn't take it so seriously yeah because they have like a story behind their face (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly and it, like I said, I got to keep Geralt's tattoo from the second game, man. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm all the way with that game, bro. It's too fun, man. Um, It was weird, though, because you and I have been playing Neo 2 pretty much all week. So playing Witcher after playing Neo 2 so much was just totally weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to parry shit. I was trying to fucking... Um, Change my stances in Witcher 3. <laughs> <laughs> and it totally wasn't working. Um, in Witcher 3, you can um, interrupt your attacks by dodging. You know, even if you press the attack button, you could dodge and Geralt will just dodge rather than attack. I forgot about that. Because in Neo 2, you can't really do that shit. You know, you yeah. fully commit to your attacks. Yep. Um, so I had to get used to that again. And then when I jumped back to play Neo 2, I was trying to dodge in the middle of my attacks and that shit wasn't working. So <laughs> <laughs> I was getting my ass kicked there. But no, I mean, I think, man, I'm glad I played Witcher during the time I did 
where I, there's just nothing else really to do, you know, so I could uh, give my full concentration and enjoy the story. And in this playthrough, I chose the opposite romance option from what Wick, Rick did. Yeah. And it's crazy. I mean, it's its whole own story. And to think about it with as much as they put into it, like the voice acting, the graphics, everything. To have two completely different sides of it going through the same story is kind of wild, man, that they prepared for it like that. I think they had a third option, too, if you try to romance both of them. Wait, can you, though? Yes. And then I think what happens is, like, they both leave you or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> they both get mad at you. <laughs> That's actually funny. Damn, can you imagine if, like, the whole game, they're like, all right, man, I'm going to just go behind their backs and play both of them, you know, telling them I love them or telling them both that I love them and shit. And then at the very end of the game, it doesn't work out. That would be crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah. I would be mad. I would be so mad. <laughs> so I'm not quite done with the game yet, though. I got one more uh, download to, or one more download, one more uh, DLC to go, um, which will be good because, dude, I just looked at it. We got three weeks until Final Fantasy VII, bro. Oh, man. Three. We could have been playing that game. Oh, already? Yeah, yeah. But whatever. The delay happened, and it's coming in three weeks, bro. That is also what I'm worried about. Is, is it going to be released on mm -hmm. time for the mm -hmm. physical problem? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, again, like we talked about last week, like the unforeseen consequences of this whole coronavirus thing is yeah the production of the physical copies or of the special edition stuff that we got or the delivery of it could be delayed because there's just you know not enough manpower or they're waiting for everything to get sterilized or something like that mm -hmm. i was telling rick dude i might just buy this game twice man <laughs> i'm gonna buy <laughs> even though we already spent almost 400 dollars on it i'm gonna buy a digital version just to guarantee i can play it you know that first day dude yeah, I was thinking about it too. I was gonna get my my hard copy to my cousin, mm -hmm. but then I saw the steel case, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I kind of want to have the disc inside the steel case that I mm -hmm. got that mm -hmm. I paid for the four hundred dollars." But mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll. I I have plenty of time to think about it. Oh, no, don't say it like that. You don't have no time to think about it, dude. That game's coming three weeks. I I think they said they're doing something with Final Fantasy fourteen and Final Fantasy seven. What? If you pre ordered it from the store, the PlayStation store. I'm gonna have to pull that up while we're mm. during this podcast. But yeah. Dude, yeah, let me know. I'm gonna have to renew my fourteen just to get the perks, dude. <laughs> well, I think it's actually more on four uh seven is getting the perks. What? From fourteen? Let me see. Yeah. Let me oh, let me okay, let wait, me yeah. check. Confirm this. Confirm because this. Because be I dismissed the article because I was like, you know what? I, I you don't want to jump back into 14. Oh, yeah. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, Rick is just scared of the commitment of time to have to do with anything. <laughs> I know. I have to like rethink about my, my all my shit. Oh, it's a theme. Never mind. Oh, okay. On PlayStation? Oh, of course. Yeah. It's only out on PlayStation now. If you uh, pre-ordered uh, Final Fantasy Seven, and you have fourteen or something like that, oh, okay, that's okay. why I couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that's gonna be interesting, man. They just released a bunch of new information as well um, about uh, Seven Remake. I think they did more of an outline on Sang, one of the people in the Turks. Uh, they did more of an outline on. Don Corneo, <clears throat> they highlighted one of his um, main goons that you'll be fighting. So they're just releasing a lot of information, which is cool. But at the same time, I'm starting to get to media blackout like you, man. Just n avoid everything that has to do with Final Fantasy. They're coming out with like documentaries about that shit too now, man. Dude, yeah, I'm doing my very best not to watch. The There's any, like a 30 dude, minute anything. thing on YouTube right now about it. I'm like, oh. I really want to watch this, but at the same time, I just some things I just don't want to be spoiled on, you know. Yeah, I was reading comments, and the first comment was like a guy who was like really, really scared that it's gonna change his perception of the the original game. Uh huh. And then I closed the comments right away. I was 
not. <laughs> <laughs> what I think it is now, though, I think we did talk about this not too long ago, but it's really just filling in your imagination of what's happening in the game, right? Like oh. on PlayStation 1, the graphics were only so good. We didn't know what the fuck, you know, we had to like write the story in our minds kind of or write some of the visuals in our minds, you know, of what was actually happening. Like I think one of the big things that I was reading about, depending on, there's different routes you can go, right, for how you want Cloud to dress up as a female. And yep. depending on how that goes, you could either look better or look worse. In the PlayStation 1 game, looking better or worse, it didn't matter. You went in there looking the same right yeah. um it just you could tell the difference at the end whether you get picked or not uh by don corneo and this one if you really just don't put in the effort to get all the items you're gonna look like shit and it is gonna look different from if you want the best options you know yeah so that is what is like one of those cases where our imagination we won't have to use our imagination anymore you know they'll like just literally give it to us right there. And I think that fits in line with the comment that you read about how it might ruin someone's perception of the original game because each person has this set idea in their mind of what the game is, you know? Yeah. So now that there's no room to fill your imagination, I think it'll have that effect on a lot of people. But for me, I'm along for the ride, dude. Like more Final Fantasy VII is all right with me, regardless of what it is. Yep, exactly. I can't wait, dude. The fucked up part is, too, I have jury duty that week. What? What? <clears throat> Can you get that canceled? Isn't it canceled? <laughs> I don't know. There wouldn't be any I don't know. courts open or anything like that, right? Listen, if, if I was Batman, I would tell you, crime never, <laughs> crime never <laughs> sleeps. <laughs> but, yeah, man. But it's, it's And the, the worst part, too, is it, it's federal jury duty. So... I guess it's a little bit better. I, I can just call in. You know, I don't have to physically show up to the courthouse, but fucking knock on wood. Hopefully I don't have to get picked, you know? Yeah, hopefully you can just call in then, you mm -hmm. know? and Because then you have a gathering of more than, what, 50 people? <laughs> <laughs> in one place, 20 dude. people, exactly. That would be crazy if they have, like, the jury, like, sit out in the stands, dude, like, six feet apart instead of just in the jury box. That would be kind of wild, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or just have a jury from home. Like, we'll be home watching the case on our computers, just live stream that shit. Damn. That wild. would be crazy. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll see. There's a lot of, there's so much stuff that's happening, not just in my life, but in the world that wants to get in the way of me enjoying Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yep. But I'm going to find a way, dude. I'm going to find a way to play this shit. Is it on a Monday, right? Yeah, I got to start calling. Actually, Sunday night, I have to start calling this number, and then they're going to let me know. Mm. So, we'll see, bro. Like I said, knock on wood. Knocking. Hopefully, I don't get picked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, But, yeah. So, Final Fantasy VII coming up quick. Oh, Neo 2. We've been playing a lot of Neo 2, dude. Yep. Rick and I have been co-oping through the whole thing. It's been a great adventure, um, a lot of uh, laughter, a lot of tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucked up part is if you co-op, cool, you have someone to help you out. But at the same time, there's no checkpoints. You know, Normally, if you go through a level, there's checkpoints at certain spots that you could just go back to if you die. In co-op, if both of you die or if you run out of this like revive bar... You got to start all the way back at the all beginning. All the way over. All the way, dude. So and I always ask that question. Every single time we <laughs> fail that mission, I'm like, do we have to do this whole thing all <laughs> over again? Because <laughs> oh Rick and I, especially the first go through a level, we're pretty meticulous. You know, we're checking every corner. We're looking for all of our little Kodama buddies that give us blessings to find more items and more experience and shit like that. We check every corner twice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we'll do this for maybe an hour and then die at the very end. Ugh. And then whenever we die, I always think in my head, what do we have to run through? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We're going to just skip through everything. 
I was just thinking about, oh man, okay, we got to run past this. We got to run past this. Ooh, this might be dangerous. Oh no, I don't know if we could run past that. That just always runs through my mind. Um, but regardless, no, it's a, it's a good time. Um, it's good. Uh, feudal Japanese fucking samurai ninja action, dude, with demons thrown in there, man. It's it's yeah. fucking super good times. Um, I know Nick, Rick is still running his uh, chain and kunai, just tripping everybody, dude. Hell yeah, because I don't know why. Like, all I do is three attacks, and <laughs> it's it pulls works. the enemy. Yeah, it pulls the enemy to me, and then they're like staggered, and then it gives me enough time to trip them. And then they're on their butt. And then while they're on their butt, like, I stab them in the stomach. So it's like a three-hit combo, and it does, like, a lot of damage. Now, there are times when I miss, and that's where, you know, you're, like, really staggering his stamina, killing mm. him, and, and, you know, doing the heavy damage. And then here, um, here I am acting like a ninja, just throwing my chain and kunai every once in a while. So, yeah, it does not give the enemy a time to breathe or you know escape and mm -hmm. if they're trying to escape you know it's already too late i'm already pulling them in you mm -hmm. know for for both of us to stab them yeah so i like the that what do you call that it's not feng shui but that synergy mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're not allowed mm -hmm. to use it yeah whatever. yeah because i'm really trying to play like a samurai role right so uh i'm specking all my stats so i could wear heavier armor and at the yep. same time that stat uh improves um using the axe as a weapon so i have that as my highest stat and i was like oh you know what let me start using the axe you know it only makes sense you know if i'm keep leveling up this certain stat the sword's gonna be useless let me start using the axe i started using the axe bought some skills here and there started to get fun and there's missions where rick and i can't help each other um, it's like one-on-one -on -one duels with certain main characters, you know, whether they want to test your strength or it's like a demon you got to kill once and for all, you know what I mean? And one is you got to fight like the leader of your clan, Nobunaga. And I was using my sword. I was getting my ass kicked like five <laughs> times in a row. I got my ass kicked and, Me while, too. Yep. and he's raining fire. He's doing like 10 million fire slashes that have blade beams that attack you and shit and i was like oh man there's no way i'm gonna beat him with my sword you know and then on this one last time i was like all right let me use my axe let's see how it goes i beat him first try dude and i was like oh my god <laughs> i need to start using my axe now and ever since i did every mission where it's one of those one-on-one -on -one battles i think you have to fight the the spear dude that we helped out that huge guy we gotta fight um the obsidian samurai you got to fight this uh, yokai, half-human, half-demon person like us. Um, and then I did the dojo challenge where you have to fight the master with a wooden sword. I fought him with a wooden axe, and I did each of those, like, in one try in less than 30 seconds, dude. Because yeah. the way I'm built, um, whenever I attack with the axe, even if they're blocking, it does high key damage. So I like, have to hit him five times. And all their stamina is gone, dude. And then I could just stab them. It's crazy, man. Yep. Kind of hurts my feelings because I want to be a samurai and use a sword. But no, I'm using an axe now. I'm like thinking, yeah, I was thinking too that the way that we play, our play styles are completely different. Mm -hmm. Like, if you think about it, every time I substitute, you know, I'm a ninja. So I substitute every time like my health reaches below you know reaches it to zero mm -hmm. i come back to life with uh you know one fourth of my life and i was thinking yeah i've died at least four times if i was fighting a normal battle mm. if you didn't have so, that substitute exactly so i think that's why there's like a little uh an advantage into living longer because i can like kind of escape heal mm -hmm. and run away but you know, I think that's why I made that fight, those fights, those one-on-one -on -one fights more easier because mm -hmm. literally I used up all my substitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and you have your fucking thunder and lightning spell that does crazy damage, dude. Yeah, I have to read the descriptions because I was like thinking, oh, yeah, I just 
you know, attack, use it, and they do damage. And it does do a little bit damage, but mm-hmm. when I was reading it again, I was like, oh, yeah, it actually does massive damage if one, if their key is out. Mm-hmm. And that's for the lightning, but the other two have different stat abilities. So mm-hmm. I have to really read those and see how to effectively use them because mm-hmm. we you you like learned my ability better than I did. You're like Rick, <laughs> right here you right now, and I was like, what? Oh, okay. And then it does like you know a thousand damage. I was Dude, like, oh shit, yeah. I, I didn't even know about this. Because <laughs> <laughs> the most I seen, because like I said, I just chunk away if not their health, if they're blocking, I chunk away their stamina. And I think you did mention, oh, this works better if they have no stamina. So I think one time I forgot what we were fighting. It might have been that enemy with a bunch of heads that crawls around on all fours. Uh-huh. And I think I got that to zero stamina. He had like half health. You shot your lightning bolts one time, and I it did it ticked twice for like 3,300 damage. That's almost 7,000 damage. I was like, oh, my God. Those are the biggest numbers I've ever seen in this game, dude. <laughs> See, this, I am not using <laughs> my skills the right way because I panic, and I just spam it. Mm-hmm. And all I see is like, a hundred damage, a hundred damage, oh, and man. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep spamming it. But yeah, like when you pointed out, I was doing massive damage. I was like, oh fuck. Okay, I really have to think about this. I'm yeah, do it. But it's, it's tricky now too. In in some points, Neo two is easier just because we have this demon counter now, and um, some of the monsters' attacks are a little bit more telegraphed because they have that red flash that tells you they're doing a charge attack. So it's a little bit easier in that sense. Um, but at the same time, enemies can just attack every angle, dude. There's like no safe spot that you can hide behind. Like some enemies in Dark Souls, you can stand behind them. Like if they're walking all fours, just stand right behind one of their back feet. They don't have an attack that covers that area, you know. In this game, yep. there's a fucking snake that does a 360 spin and takes off half your life. Um, they have monsters with heads on their butt. They got fucking guys that jump and spin and land and fucking do damage to you. And it's all over the place, man. Yeah, like that one last monster we fought. It mm. was like that huge monster in a big ass area. Yeah. And I was like thinking, I'm safe here, you know, but he like lifts up his back foot slams the ground and i was like okay i am not safe here and then it doesn't make it even better like when you know i'm behind him i'm like okay you know i got this he like jumps in the air spin three six or 180 spins lands and like stares at me and i'm like okay yeah i'm I'm pretty vulnerable right now so so that was the worst part is in that right there's hard it's hard to find a spot to hit him because he just has maybe six legs he's like a spider giant spider mixed with a cow or something so he has these sick six insect like legs and they're super thin and it's hard to hit them but at the same time when he puts his leg up and stomps down it always seems to hit you no matter what even though his legs are so small dude it's so ridiculous man yep yep so i mean in some ways the game is easier i think the more i'm playing it now the more like you know me I'm always about offense and just like continuously attacking, man. Um, And I think now I'm finding the best way to to do that, you know, just to stay on top of the enemy. Don't let them get any attacks off. Um, Just keep the pressure on them. Because I feel like if I do play defensively, that's where I get fucked up, dude. You know, like I give them Mm -hmm. room to do all these big attacks and shit. Um, But it all comes down to learning... Uh, an enemy's attack patterns like learning their moves and all that stuff that's why the first time we ever encounter an enemy i hate them so much dude <laughs> <laughs> but after a while getting used to their attacks and what to look out for i think that's a lot better man dude uh, that that's yeah that's true because like um that last mission we played mm-hmm. and there's two bosses in it and you know we were fighting that one ninja with the gun mm-hmm. or whatever he was mm-hmm. name is the first time we fought him, I think we used up everything we had, like all of our potions. Every, well, at least I did. You know, I used mm. up all my jitsus. We barely survived, and we're like, oh, man, this is great. You know, this is the end. Nope. There nope. was another <laughs> boss right after him. And, 
you know, of course we die at that that second boss, and then mm-hmm. so we speed run past everything, literally ignoring everything. We get to that ninja boss, and we fuck him up so easily. I think Not I fucked him up, items, and I yeah. And yeah, any items, and I was like, what the fuck did we adapt and evolve so <laughs> so fast? Because yeah, I think yeah. we were so angry that we died at that, that and we had to run through that a whole boss. level again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what it was, and probably is like confidence that we got you know just to face off and then that's why we were able to kill him so fast yeah yeah i, I don't know i'm loving i'm loving neo 2 so far it's crazy too how me using an axe at least to myself it started out as a joke you know like oh i'm raising this stat so i can wear heavy armor fuck it let me use an axe because that's what it coincides with you know i i am all about using a katana but the axe has just completely changed my life dude <laughs> i might go back to fucking <laughs> neo 1 and try it out Try out the same build and see how it, how badass it is, dude. Do you think you're gonna use the book of res- respect and just repick everything <laughs> just for the axe? No, I think where I'm at right now is a good spot for axe because I feel like I do enough damage as it is. And what I was messing around with yesterday too, after you left, was um, rerolling stats. So I rerolled a bunch of stats on my armor. Um, and on a couple of my weapons, and on my gun, I think, and the axe. So now it's like, I think it does more damage when I do high attacks. It takes less stamina, and I do high key damage if I do high attacks. So I'm like spec to where I perfectly want to go. And I think there's a samurai ability where if you, you know, your key pulse, yeah. if you do a key pulse but switch a stance, then um, I automatically, attack. yeah, I automatically get all my stamina back or something like that or a big chunk of it back. So all I do really is I do my uh, high stance special move. Then I switch stances to mid stance and then do a special move on that and then just switch back and forth. And those two attacks alone, like keep enemies pinned down, you know, like if I hit with one of those attacks, they stagger, their whole shit gets fucked up, dude. So it's a pretty decent combo for now. Um, The only thing that happens is like, I'm so vulnerable, dude. Like, that's why Odachi guys kill me because they have long reach and I have to kind of move my way in to attack them. So sometimes they can get combos off and, and murder me. But it's it's worked so far. So I yeah, just hope. I'm trying to pick up the Odachi as my second because I was like, oh, man, mm-hmm. you're having a blast with the, the axe. Mm-hmm. You know, I might as well get a, like a heavy hitting weapon too. And yeah, I respected it's pretty fun it reminds me a lot kind of like a kung fu master rather you know because mm, mm-hmm. i have this ability that like allows me to to stab my weapon into the ground and then kick it up with my foot mm. and then supposedly the the extra skill behind it um if if it does enough damage where the key goes to zero like it'll send them flying and oh, so shit. the entire time i was like trying to send somebody flying but mm your axe would like instantly kill the enemy like in like two hits and i'm like oh man i'll never ever (laughs) be able to see this ability because you're doing so much damage that it's not their key that really gets damaged it's Mm. you're really killing life yeah 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 Yeah. the the axe is is heavy man it's it's a heavy hitter for sure but you were doing that one move man where you like flip over them and shit i thought you were doing like the demon move where he's Pogoing on his sword and shit. That's what I thought you were doing for a while. I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> Rick's out here!" Oh yeah, attack. yeah. Because I the, the reason why I like the Adachi is because you know how you have the three stances, mm-hmm. but if you get an ability for each of the the when you finish a combo, you press triangle. Um, it allows me to change the stance, and then so oh. I went from high stance to low stance. You can change it however, but I went to high stance to low stance to medium stance, mm-hmm. and that was, it allows me to kind of infinitely do combos. And then when I did the the low stance, that's where it allowed me to jump over behind the oh. enemy because, like, if I get cornered, I just press X, and then I can just jump right over and end up behind the enemy. Oh, okay. Which, it's pretty fun because I was like, yeah, this reminds me of definitely like a ninja, you know, yeah. or kung fu master kind of. Yeah, you're jumping around everywhere. Damn, dude. Yeah. See, and that's what's so cool is just it's um, and I think now playing it even more, 
it's it's just so much further away from Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Sekiro or any of the From Software games. It's it's a lot more arcadey, I think. You know, you could have a lot more fun and flexible be more flexible with with what you got going on in the game. Um I think my only complaint is they use a lot of the same maps for different missions, dude. <laughs> they just cut off a different part of the map to do little side and missions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's really my only yeah. complaint. Um they got a good enemy variety this time around. Um that hasn't been too boring yet. Um but yeah, man. I hope we're not almost done with it. It feels like we're almost done with the game, but I hope that's not the case, dude. I think yeah, maybe. I think we're like 60%. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping to. I'll be more like at least halfway, but not almost done because it, it's now getting to like a turning point where we're finding out who the real enemy in this game is. Um, so I hope that doesn't mean that we're really done, that we're finding out who the real villain is. But um, but yeah, no. Yeah. Good times, man. Good times with Neo too. Um, You have been playing Animal Crossing, dude, which I just looked up right now. And has a fucking ninety two on Open Critic, so that's fucking crazy, dude. That all these outlets are rating it so high, man. Is it worth the ninety two? Yeah, I, I I see where you know the charm is, mm-hmm. and this is actually my first Animal Crossing game. What and really? Yeah, yeah. So when I started playing, I think it was what Friday that I started mm-hmm. playing this game. Um. And I only played for a little bit. This game really goes off of your time, you know, like, which is if it's like 9 p.m. real time, then it is 9 p.m., you know, inside the game. So it's nighttime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Friday, Saturday, uh, I was kind of playing it at, during nighttime. And I was like, like saying, oh, man, most of this time I've been playing this game has been in the dark and Mm -hmm. what is it like to play in real time and thinking about it i was like i don't know man because what if you have people that are actually working at work you know eight to five job they get home maybe around six or seven Mm -hmm. like me and then all of a sudden you know the only time you can play the game is at night night Mm -hmm. so yeah that's what i was like is there a way where we can play during the day during the night because um i think it was saturday night too like I went to bed and then I couldn't sleep. So I'll, I woke up like maybe 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, okay, this is a good time to play some Animal Crossing. But yeah, it was like nighttime. Mm. And, you know, I wanted to play during the day. And then also, too, that it's this is not a complaint, but like since it's going off the day, um, you know, things that really require building mm-hmm. things, it, it requires a full day you know oh yeah 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 um but yeah i can see the charm there there's really i guess there is objectives but not really so that it's enforced Mm -hmm. it's just your personal objective what do you want to do in this Mm -hmm. island and i'm Mm -hmm. happy i'm really happy with this game like i i just want to fish honestly Mm -hmm. like that's my my only thing and yeah so now i'm able to fish you know kind of right off the bat but I have like low level items that my weapon or my, not my weapon, my, uh, my fishing rod breaks mm-hmm. after a certain amount of fishing. Oh. So I have to keep rebuilding it or, uh-huh. you know, recrafting it. And I'm looking, you know, to progress the game. So to the point where I can get a fishing rod where it doesn't break, you mm-hmm. know, um, and also build like a house, my my town. Because when I was like seeing some gifts online, there's people with the whole villages, and I was like, man, I want more people in my 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 village. And mm-hmm. yeah, this game is super super fun, super great. Um, especially today, we played with uh, uh, some of our friends. Uh, we went, I went to some of their islands, and holy crap, like everything is really randomized, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you don't get the same thing. Uh, apparently, um, when you start a game, everyone gets different fruits. That is like kind of the specialty of their island. Mm-hmm. So for me, I got peaches. Um, and then other players would get like apples, oranges, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. And then so I was asking, you know, everybody else if they can give me one of their fruit so I can bring it back to my island, mm-hmm. plant that tree, and then I have whatever 
specialty fruit they they had oh, from their island. Oh, that's cool. So it forces you to be, I guess, social with the game, so you can get a little bit of everything that everybody else has. That's different. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And it's really fun because, like, when you go to other people's places, you see, you know, how their creativity is, how what they do, how they farm, how you know, like everything, literally everything. Mm-hmm. You know, the way they build their their village was pretty cool because. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that a lot of, I think all of our friends built their houses to the left of the village or of whatever's town spot. Okay. I'm the only one that built it to the right next to the (laughs) river. (laughs) So I was kind of thinking like, I guess like a, I don't know. If 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 there was an actual situation in real life where we have to live in the woods, mm-hmm. my thought was to build things next to rivers, you know, so I can fish and stuff like that. But mm. yeah, um, I'm actually trying to see if I can move my little tent, my little house, if I get one next to the ocean to the left. Oh, do some you know, ocean beach fishing. House. Exactly. So I think I should have built like everybody else but um still the island everybody's islands are all different they all Mm -hmm. look different um the game is super fun the objectives are basically kind of doing chores life oh yeah (laughs) well yeah 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 i would say that's more more of a better way to explain it Mm. to live your life and my thing is to try to see if i can get a hammock and Mm -hmm. you know live on the beach like a bum okay uh, Okay, fish and you know i'll just I don't have like a timeline where I have to like, oh, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. It's more of, ah, I'm going to see if I can get a fishing rod that doesn't break. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would definitely say, yeah, it's worth like maybe like a nine out of ten. Damn, Um, yeah. But just so you know, a lot of people are expecting, you know, your typical game of this is an objective. This is what we must do. Where's the story? Mm -hmm. Um it's actually built within all of the whole island itself with the characters you re- interact with, the dialogue, and that's what builds the whole game itself. And I see, like, that's a wonderful charm. Like, mm-hmm. man, um, <clears throat> I don't know why I haven't gotten into this game earlier, but, yeah, me being able to visit everybody's island, that was really, really cool. Dude, so I was thinking about it, right? Because I was thinking about picking this game up too. Unfortunately, I really don't have... I guess the time, you know, to even though it is on a handheld console, I don't have the time to, you know, really keep up and, and build stuff. I too would only be playing at nighttime. But there's mm-hmm. some charms to it. I was telling myself, or I was just thinking to myself in my mind, man, if because you guys are fishing a lot, you know, if you can build like an aquarium with all the fish you catch, I, that I might just buy this game. And I looked it up real quick, and you fucking can, dude. Dude, I've seen somebody like, yeah, build like a bunch of aquariums on yeah. their island and they had fish. And then I was like thinking, man, I'm just going to be catching like all your, your typical fish and uh-huh. stuff like that. But I saw a gif like somebody had like a giant ass shark in the middle what of a swimming fuck? pool. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Where do you catch you that? I don't know. But holy holy crap. There's a lot of things you can fish and see. Um, but I, I would say they're rare or maybe mm-hmm. it has something to do with the progression of the game. Sure. Other than that, like I just went fishing right now um, before we started the podcast. And I got this this i don't know what it is it's like a little fish creature Uh and it kind of has like its little baby arms or something like that (laughs) (laughs) and i don't know if it's rare or not but either way like so when you put fish down um you put them in like a like a temporary aquarium which Mm -hmm. is like a little tiny fish tank this motherfucker has its own giant fish tank and it's like a little tiny shrimp looking thing mm-hmm. and i was like man this must be rare so yeah it's nice. fun you know fishing is is unique I, would, I was thinking like i oh yeah there's only like a couple of fish types but you know our friends were posting a lot of different fishes that i haven't encountered yet and mm-hmm. i was like damn dude i really need to explore the fishing um but yeah i even me like i ended up fishing a a rock and i was like well what what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) i didn't know you can do that but yeah it's cool i really love this game i'm you know and the thing is too if you plan on getting this game eventually um you don't have to dive in like 
hours and hours at a time. It's mm-hmm. more of, oh, hey, you know, I have some little bit of downtime. Let me just, uh, you know, fish real quick or, you know, like, look, get some trees or, I don't know, get some items and then, you know, save and quit. Mm-hmm. So it's an easy game to jump in and out of, basically. Oh, okay. That's good, man. That's good. Um, yeah, see, because I got into a little bit of that. Remember when we were playing? Damn, dude. See, now that I'm talking about it, I hope I can find it somewhere. But um, Starbound, I remember I was building like this. This awesome samurai, Japanese samurai Japanese castle with like a bat island. cave that yeah. goes down into the middle of the water that I never knew you could even and do. And it went underwater <laughs> and I just had, it was like a reverse aquarium and shit, dude. Yeah. If there's feudal Japan architecture in this game, then I might just buy it too, dude. And that's the only thing I'm going to do is build my house out of like fucking... Like a Japanese castle and shit, dude. <laughs> I might do that. Yep. If you show me that one day, I'm, I might just buy the game, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but damn, dude, now I have to look if I have my Starbound save, bro. Yeah, I'm still down to to do that because we, we have like our characters and yeah. everything. Damn, yeah. my ship too? Holy shit. Yeah, I got to look. I got to look. It's in my um, external because that's where I used to save like Steam and everything like that. So I got to look, man. But... Damn, that's cool. I mean, I and I think it's cool that just shows, right? Like the variety of fucking video games that are out there. You know, I think the biggest contrast between the two is this week with um, Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing coming out at the same time, right? Yeah. Both are completely different games, have completely different sets of fan bases, but at the same time, it's all video games. There's something that you can enjoy, have an interactive experience with on both sides under the same medium. I mean, that's so sick, dude. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, and I think there's even more cases than that. I mean, we're on Neo as well. And that's like completely different too. You know, I think that's just cool. Just, uh, the diversity that's out there and what people can enjoy spending their time on, dude, whether it's picking a wall paint, for fucking your house in Animal Crossing or paying the wall with demon blood and fucking doom, dude. I think it's dude. all sick. <laughs> yeah, one of her friends had the helmet and that looked pretty sick. Oh, I know. I can't of... believe like you could actually wear it, dude. That's kind yeah, of Yeah, a lot of players are like playing their video games with that uh, helmet on. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that must be pretty cool. You know, you're protected from the corona. At the same time, you can play games. <laughs> can you imagine wearing that out? It's <laughs> like... Being out and about outside, wearing that helmet, like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, protecting myself from Corona, just covering my face. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I saw like somebody in the picture, like, had a, a empty water jug mm-hmm. on his head as a as a Protecting. mask. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, you are not safe. <laughs> that is fucking funny, dude. Yeah. Oh man, but yeah, no, it's been a good, it's been a good week for games. It's been unfortunate with the whole lockdown and everything going on. I mean, where one thing goes down, another goes up. So now it's cool to spend that time on video games. Unfortunately for me, I'm an essential worker, so I still have to go into work, man. Yeah. Um, but how is it working from home? You're actually, like, working, working still, huh? Yeah. Um. So what I do is, like, I would kind of, yeah, uh, I would work. Um. But it's not like you have that pressure of who's looking on your screen mm-hmm, or, you mm-hmm. know, you have to sit up. And, dude, I'm, like, wearing, like, my pajamas. <laughs> uh, my belly is out. So <laughs> it, it's cool, you know. And then, like, I can step away, grab a snack, and mm-hmm. then, you know, um, have uh, things on the side to to keep me entertained yeah, while I'm yeah. doing work. So, you know, I don't have that, that pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, but like I said, you know, there is that opposite where you're used to that daily interaction with other people or going mm-hmm. out. Even being in traffic is, you know, in your mind. But now I'm like, I'm seeing the same walls, four walls every <laughs> single day. And uh, uh. I'm not sure how, like, how long that can last. Like, it's it's great for a lot of people, but... Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I'm like, I'm going to actually go out and get some McDonald's or something so I can, you know, see the greenery. Or Have that little like that. bit of interaction. Exactly. 
it's yeah it, it's strange because you know n normally you'd be like oh yeah staying at home is the best thing in the world but i think i'd like that if i have the ability to do anything i want but right now it feels like you're in a cage and you're like it's all everything's on lockdown you're not allowed to leave mm -hmm. i'm not sure how i feel because when someone tells me something i like to do the opposite of that thing you know like <laughs> If they say you're stuck in your your home, you want to get I'm, out. I want to get out for mm -hmm. some reason, you know. And I think that's what happened when the, you know, everyone's like locked in. So mm -hmm. I don't want to feel locked in, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's wild. But the best we can do for everyone out here is to stay in with our video yep. games, dude. Um, depending on how long this lasts. Even if it lasts a couple more weeks, I know at least I'll be entertained with Final Fantasy VII Remake, dude. Um, it's crazy to think that this can go on for that long, dude. It's really been just the third day of this whole lockdown, but it feels like too long already, right? Yeah. So I think it's been a, yeah, a couple of days, but I've been at home since Monday. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the only time I go out is just to grab the food real quick and then come back. And mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I guess now's the time to catch up on all our backlog, get prepared for Final Fantasy, and hopefully your jury duty gets canceled. <laughs> hopefully, dude. <laughs> like, everything in the universe wants me to not play this game, dude. But I know, like, we'll what's going on? We'll find what a way, is dude. What's going on? <sighs> but yeah, um. I think that is it for us this week. Uh, you got anything else, man? Yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, PlayStation 5 did a presentation this week. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they let out a tweet, um, I think on Monday, saying, hey, guys, everybody tune in to the uh, PlayStation YouTube page. We're going to have um, a good roadmap to show you what we're planning to do with the PlayStation 5, right? This is really the first news you're ever hearing about the PlayStation 5. They have, they released some of the specs, but we don't know what it looks like. Um, we don't know if it's for sure going to be backwards compatible. We don't know a lot of stuff about it. Meanwhile, all this information is coming out about the Xbox um, Series X, the next one that's coming out. So everybody got excited, right? Even I got excited. Um, I went ahead and bought a bunch of Sony stock just because I was that <laughs> excited in this recession after this presentation we would see an upturn right no it was just a ted talk about um why they chose the design decisions uh that they made when creating the playstation 5 <laughs> didn't show off any games i think they did confirm that it's backwards compatible with ps4 you could play ps4 games off of a uh, external um just like you could with the playstation 4 now um, but PlayStation 5 games, they have a certain architecture uh, for the memory. I think it's like some kind of special SSD to where you can only play PlayStation 5 games off of the hard drive that's in the PlayStation 5. Um, didn't go over much anything else. They said they had 3D audio in it and shit like that. Um, and yeah, people kind of rioted, dude. I'm going to look right now for what the likes and dislikes. But did you check this out, right? What was your takeaway from it? Uh, it was very educational, and <laughs> <laughs> they're really explaining, you know, the the compatibility issues with um, you know, between games. Oh, PlayStation Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, and so that was all it was saying is they're working on it. They're trying to find a way, and the first hundred best games that they're playing is is compatible mm, on the PlayStation uh, Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like thinking, oh, okay, that's cool. And I was like thinking maybe in the future, starting as of now, to make everything compatible, why don't you develop games like a platform where everything is universal? So mm -hmm. let's say you built it on that archetype architecture of the playstation 5 you know just keep expanding upon that you know so that way it's easier to to make it com backwards compatible mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. for games you know because i think since they're 
they keep changing the architecture of the PlayStation. Developers are adapting and trying to 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 make the games cater to that mm-hmm. system console. But maybe it should be the reverse. Why don't you have Sony adapt to the developers mm-hmm. a universal thing so that way, you know, like it'll be easier when PlayStation 6, 7, or 8 come out then you know everything is backwards compatible mm-hmm. and stuff like that but yeah it was cool like learning about the this the solid state um yeah it's it's definitely more expensive um to, that's to yeah produce. um and yeah so they're trying to go to a middle compromise i think they said that trying to have a mixture of both where you load your games onto an external hard drive and then you have the ssd to play them mm-hmm. um but other than that, yeah, uh, I can see where there's a lot of bottlenecks between the console and the and the software, mm-hmm. you know, developers. And I'm scared because it sounds like it might come down to um, similar to the, how the PlayStation Three came out, where the developers were having issues. Oh, yeah. Um, and because that's it was why a different was, kind of hardware, right? Exactly. So they went to Xbox because it was a lot easier, mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot affordable, and everything. So that's why I was like, don't repeat that same mistake, you know? Because mm-hmm. PlayStation Four, you made it easy for everybody. indie developer, and mm-hmm. yeah, everybody to just easily bring their content and creation onto the PlayStation Four. Now you're making it like. It's kind of getting harder, um, mm-hmm. and it's getting more expensive. And then if Xbox is like, "Oh, you know what? Let's just knock it down to four hundred dollars," and PlayStation's <laughs> at five to six hundred, yeah, yeah, you already see that everyone is going to fall down to the, you know, back to to Xbox. Yeah, I think, and I, I just looked at the video right now just to prove my point about the reception of this thing. It's at. 3.8 thousand likes, 3.2 thousand dislikes. So it's it's super split, man. It's split right down the middle. Just a little bit more positive, which is not a good thing um, with how it was received. Um, but I think I'm 100% with you. I think what came out of this was people broke down the specs. And ultimately, the Xbox is going to be the more powerful console. Um, but I think what they were trying to explain in this PlayStation kind of TED Talk was with you don't need that much power with what we want to do on our console with what um developers are trying to do with their games this is going to be enough and i think that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way as well or that doesn't matter what we see is xbox has like 52 cores or something like that and playstation 4 only has 30 or some shit you know what i'm saying they're only going to see like the greater numbers um so it'll be interesting and hopefully with what PlayStation is doing, it is the cheaper system um, because I think that's what it's going to come down to um, during this console generation is which one's going to be more expensive, man. Um, I think they're earmarking it at about $600 for both consoles. But if you tell me the PlayStation 5 is going to be 550 and the Xbox is 600 uh, I think the Sony PlayStation will sell a lot more just because of that $50, dude. Yeah, yeah exactly so we'll see it'll be interesting times that and they said they said that the current coronavirus isn't affecting their production so all this shit is still going to come out this holiday season man so it'll, it, it, we'll see man that's a big promise i think yeah because you'd want to think that nobody wants to work in the factory all close together building a playstation 5 but if they figured it out then shit Unless it's automated, then shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's all robots just building your PlayStation 5. That'd be crazy, bro. Yep. Crazy. But yeah, that's just a, a look into the future, um, which as of right now doesn't look too good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just read a couple minutes ago that uh, Canada isn't sending anybody to Japan for the Olympics. It's happening this summer. So we're just like two steps away, man, from the Olympics getting canceled period so that's kind of wild dude you imagine people train like for four years just to try and make the olympics and then all of a sudden something out of their control just cancels that shit that's so yeah wild to me. yeah so not only that but everything else i mean i think disneyland is still closed no yeah 
Disneyland That's said it was scary. still closed, so yeah. Well, Hopefully, we still tap. We still have until May. Yeah, that's true. But still, fingers that's, crossed, dude. Yeah. Wild, wild world. But ultimately, it'll pass. The most we can do is just stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands and your butt. Um, <laughs> not in that order. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, so that's it for us this week. See you guys next week. Rick, you have a question? If you can have one trophy weapon from a video game in real life. Oh, oh that one's hard, dude. <laughs> that one's fucking hard. Like life size. Yeah, life size, real. Like it, it's actually oh, made no. out of like vibranium gun yeah. alloy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it'd be, you know what? Curveball. It'll be Sephiroth's sword. I think it's oh, called Masamun. I think I'd damn. have that shit, dude. It's like expanding across your room. Yeah, yeah, man. Like that's that. just like seven feet long and shit, dude. Just too big for any reason, man. But yeah, I'd probably have that. What about you? Uh, it's going to have to be Geralt's sword the, with the wolf. Silver sword? <laughs> yeah, the silver ah, sword. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah, the sword he... Spoiler alert. The sword he made for Siri at the end was really sick. Yeah. yeah. The one with like little inscriptions and stuff on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, see you guys next week.